Hey y'all, this is David Ducker coming back at you, and today we're going to be talking about economics in RPGs. Uh, this is a big pet peeve of mine, a gaming bugbear, as John Large would say. Uh, check out his channel, Red Dice Diaries. He's got a ton of great videos on there too. He's from England, he's got a delightful accent, so uh, go check him out. But my gaming bugbear for today is economy in gaming. Uh, a lot of RPG books and supplements, um, when they have their uh, their goods, their trade goods listed, when they have their equipment, their armor, their weapons, uh, anything you can buy, anything that, that involves the economy, uh, there's two problems with it, <laughs> often. First of all, um, the lesser problem, is that it, it's flat everywhere. So the price of a war horse in uh, in Averheim and the price of a war horse in uh, Outdorf are exactly the same. Uh, that's bad. That doesn't make you know that doesn't usually make sense, and uh, it deprives you of a lot of flavor and story. Uh, in, in my current game, for example, using the Warhammer universe, we've got uh, we've got Wissen Land, which is largely mountainous. We've got uh, Averland, which is plains, and we've got uh, let's say Talibic Land, and they're they're forested. And then uh, let's say Ostland, they're a coast. So different goods will cost different amounts in these different areas. In Wissenland, they have lots of uh, stone and metal, so those goods are worth less in that area. Whereas, you know, all the way on the other side in Ostland, uh, they're, they're a coastline, and they don't really have any metal or stone to speak of. So those goods are really expensive there. Um, and then you look at, you know, Sterling is plains. You can grow lots of food and raise lots of animals. So those goods are less expensive. So horses, uh, wheat, and you know they're going to be cheaper there. But what they don't have is wood. So uh, anything made of wood, wagons, uh, building materials for houses, wooden, uh, even a bow, uh, is going to be more expensive. And then the forested area, you know, they have lots and lots of wood. They don't have that much food or metal though especially metal so metal is really expensive there but wood is really cheap and so is uh, you know venison fur leather anything from hunting or lumbering uh, it's gonna be cheaper or gathering herbs their herbs uh, and spices material components perhaps are gonna be a lot cheaper uh, and then on the coastline they got lots and lots of fish delicious fish maybe they even have salt because they can refine the salt out of the water because uh, salt was a big deal uh, back in uh, ancient times. You know, salt's so useful for preserving things and, and also, of course, as a flavoring, uh, but mainly for preserving food. So if you look at, they have so much food down in uh, Averland, but they have no salt to preserve it with. So they have to get their salt by trading maybe with Ostland, far away Ostland. Uh, or maybe they can preserve it in honey if they'll trade with the forest, if they'll trade with uh, Talibicland. So uh, does it last as long? No, but it's a lot cheaper up front because it's closer to get. Um, and this might all seem somewhat pedantic. Uh, and in some campaigns, it will be pedantic. But it really depends on what your characters are doing. If they're involved with merchants or caravans in any way, just knowing the cargo uh, can really flush things out. Like, uh, like we had a ship moving from uh, Averland up to, let's say, Ostland. It was loaded with horses. Horses are a difficult cargo. Um, they make noise. They stamp. They get scared. They, you know, they they shit everywhere. They stink. Um, they die easily. So, so you really got to baby that cargo. And you know when you're loading and offloading that cargo, you could have problems with like stampedes uh, or broken legs. So that makes it interesting, you know. So that story was so much more interesting knowing that there was horses, and they ex exchanged that 
uh, perhaps her fish, and now they're sailing back with this cargo of dried uh, salted fish. Um, now, because they're they're on a ship filled with meat, they're more likely to attract sea serpents, uh, krakens, leviathans, things that want to eat that delicious meat. You know, so you can get stories just out of that. Um, so you get flavor, which is very important, but you also get the stories uh, if you can work it right. You know, a shipment of stone has to be handled differently uh, than than a shipment of uh, of live bees if they're uh, transplanting some beehives, perhaps. So um, that right there is a pet peeve. That one can depend on your your circumstance, your campaign mode. Uh, the other part of what I have problems with economy is just when they flat out don't make sense. Uh, if you think about, uh, just think about how difficult it is to get wood in ancient times. It's not that difficult. Uh, now contrast that with metal. You have to mine metal. Uh, you have to smelt metal. Smelting metal is very difficult and it requires a huge amount of wood or coal for the fire. Once it's smelted, then you have to craft it, forge it into the tool that you want. So if you actually look at it and research how much ore it takes to get uh, an ounce of metal and how much wood or coal or other fuel you have to burn to smelt that huge amount of ore into that ounce of metal, uh, you start to get an idea of how valuable metal is. And then you have to think about uh, the skill and the time of forging it. Plus, there's all the time and labor of mining it. You know, uh, metal is so expensive. Just any kind of metal. Just a tiny amount of metal. Like I said, it's got to be mined. you got to pay that miner. Uh, you got to maintain the mines. And, uh, you know, if you have low tech, you can only mine above the water table. And that, that drastically limits you. If you get uh, some pumps and steam, uh, steam engines, perhaps, you can pump the water out, you can mine deeper. But in the Dark Ages, they didn't have that. The Romans had it, but when they fell, uh, that technology was lost for a long time. So you start to realize how expensive metal is, and that's just like iron. And if you start thinking about uh, copper, silver, gold, uh, you know, the, the price starts to jump up real quick. So. Now we've established, you know, wood is not expensive. Iron, just iron, very expensive. Uh, and then you look at, like, uh, the the chart in a lot of books, and you're like, oh, a bow costs 100 pieces of gold. A, a bow costs 100 pieces of gold. Um, and then you look at, uh, at uh, you know, or I could get this suit of scale male armor same amount of money I get this is like 50 pounds of metal or this bow and I'm just like what what it doesn't make any sense at all uh, just do some historical research or just think about it just think about it um, you know and then there's discrepancies even between even in the same material huge discrepancies an axe costs the same as a sword. Uh, an axe uses half as much metal as a sword and is, uh, you know, like a quarter of the difficulty of making. So it, a sword should cost so much more. It's harder to make, uh, which means you need a more skilled craftsman. And just by the fact that it takes up more metal, it takes up twice as much metal, right there it should cost twice as much. But a lot of systems it costs the exact same. That doesn't make sense. Or, or if you compare uh, arrows, arrows in the real world were quite expensive because even the small amount of metal in an arrow head is still just as difficult to get. So ten arrows, uh, let's say you can ten arrows is the same mass weight of metal as a dagger. So that means that ten arrows should cost about the same as a dagger. But often they don't. Often it's, uh, you know, it's like 50 arrows cost the same as a dagger. And you're like, what? So I could take these arrowheads, melt them down, 
uh, and make uh, five daggers out of them. And then I've, uh, you know, I've, I've quintupled my, my investment. You know, I've just made five times as much as I put in just by melting and uh, reforging them. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and it, this kind of thing just drives me completely nuts, uh, especially gold. Let's come back to gold. Uh, if you look at all of the gold that's ever been mined in human history up till today, up till 2014, uh, it would create a, a cube, a solid cube of gold about this length of a football field um, on it, on any one side. Now, half of that was mined... Um, Half of that was mined after uh, 1900, so you're only looking at you know half of that amount, you know for for uh, for the whole world for before the year 1900. So that really, to me, puts it in perspective. Like that's that's not really really that that huge amount. Um, so it really makes you realize how valuable gold is and why it is so valuable. Um, just because of its rarity. Let, let's forget about all the actual uses of gold. Um, because in medieval times there weren't as many uses, but just based on its rarity, uh, gold is so expensive uh, and it makes sense. And then compare that to like the, the uh, you know, oh, Longbow. Longbow's worth a hundred pieces of gold. What? Think about if you got a hundred pieces of gold today. And that mass of gold, how much uh, money, how much wealth that would represent. And gold's very expensive. Just a gold coin is worth a lot of money. Um, so that's something that drives me nuts. The economics of RPGs. A lot of campaigns, it doesn't matter. You know, Game of Thrones, uh, Star Trek, uh, it doesn't matter. You're, you're already so rich, you don't care. The flavor is good, but the actual impacts are very low. Um, what it really, really messes up is the lower level games like Firefly, where you're tracking every dollar, you know, or if your your GM's making you buy all your equipment, and you're like, well, you know, I'm an archer, so that'll be easy for me. So I think, till I realize that apparently my bow is this huge investment. I'm like, so why do only the peasants use archery then? Because in historical times, it was because it was so cheap. It was something they could afford to do. Uh, you know, it was the most effective thing they could afford. Because they couldn't afford metal. But here, metal is cheaper. So the peasants should all have metal armor and metal weapons. And the aristocracy should have that valuable, precious wood. Ah, yes, the longbow, yes. The precious, precious wood that peasants can't afford uh, even though they live in a forest but don't don't worry about that so it drives me it drives me nuts uh, when I'm trying to make a character one of these and then my GMs are giving me a budget and, and it doesn't make sense you know and I'm just like well I, I just why can I afford this but not that like what like why like it just doesn't make any sense. It destroys my believe my my believability. It destroys the uh, the immersion in the world. And I'm just like, oh, it's just a game. I just, I, just, I, for, I tried to take it seriously for a second there. I tried to think about what my character would have struggled and how he would have gone on his shopping trip and how he would have bartered. I was trying to get in character, but I forgot. Oh, it's just a game. Oh, never mind getting in character. Forget about that. Forget about that. Uh, let's worry about. Uh, Let's worry about something else. Uh, and to me, it, it defeats the whole purpose of the game, which is getting in character and telling that character's story. Uh, so it's just a little thing, but it can have such a big impact. Um, you know, I had a GM tell me, he's like, you got 500 gold because you're a noble scion. And I'm like, I have no idea how much money that represents. That is that five longbows or is it five war horses? Uh, or is a longbow more valuable than a warhorse for some reason? It just means nothing. So you can't reward me now because I've lost faith in what you're trying to reward me with. It's meaningless. Uh, so I've taken you've taken another tool out of the GM's hand to reward the players. 
uh, which is unfortunate. So, you know, I definitely say think about it um, when you're making up your, your tables. Uh, when you're making up your areas, think about their local trade goods. Um, one, one system, I'm going to ask if you've seen any good systems, but one system I've seen that's okay is uh, some of the Warhammer stuff where they basically say, okay, a copper piece, anything a peasant could reasonably uh, buy is probably priced in copper. Anything uh, a merchant uh, or a middle class person, a smith, could reasonably buy is probably priced in silver. And anything a noble could buy is priced in gold. So ask yourself, could a peasant afford a loaf of crusty black bread? Yes. So it's probably priced somewhere in copper. Could a, could a peasant afford uh, 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 an iron dagger? Yeah. So it's probably priced in copper. Uh, could a peasant afford a horse? Probably not. So it's priced at least in silver. Uh, could a peasant afford uh, some some just meat? Just go into a uh, just go into a eatery and and just have himself some meat dinner. Uh, probably not. So it might be in silver. You know, that's another thing. People forget how expensive livestock are uh, and why you know for most of history people were vegetarian, not by choice, uh, but just because meat's so expensive. Um, you know, and then just go through. Okay, a merchant. Could a merchant afford, uh, or let's say a smith. It's easier. Could could a smith afford a war horse? No, probably not. Uh, could a smith afford a suit of full plate to buy it? No. He, he might be able to make it at cost, but he couldn't buy it. Um, so that was a great system. I liked it. Uh, if you need to to use a system for a medieval game, that's great. Um, actually, and that brings brings to mind uh, the other thing about depreciation. Uh, a lot of these systems are like, um, you know, oh, I'll sell you this sword. Oh, I've got bought this sword. Oh, but I changed my mind. I want to sell it back to you. Like, oh, I'll pay you half. Like, half. Oh yeah, it depreciates 50%. What? Depreciation didn't work like that in, in uh, ancient times because it's a cottage industry. The value of something is pretty much just the value of something unless you take it to an area that has different resources. You know, a sword is pretty much worth the same to everyone, whether you're buying it or selling it. Everything is a trade good because everything takes the same amount of effort to, to make, right? So, you know, a suit of armor is worth a suit of armor. There's no reason for it to depreciate. You can't afford to, to, to be that picky about anything. You know, I always make the joke with people. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll buy this block of gold and I'll sell it back to you, but it's only worth half as much because the gold, the solid block of gold just depreciated. According to the rule book, uh, you know, or like a, a war horse, um, you know, there's no depreciation there. It, it's, it's just as useful as as, uh, as it was when I bought it from you. It's just as useful for you to buy it. It's it's it has not actually physically depreciated. And back in the day, that was the only thing they cared about. You know, it's not like uh, like today where it's all marketing based. And uh, they say it costs this amount because uh, it's a marketing gimmick, but it doesn't act, it isn't actually valued at that if, if you were to make it. You know that that's something that's created artificially by marketing and uh, and by you know oligarchies and uh, a ton of other things. But uh, but back in the day, they didn't have any of that. They didn't have the you couldn't have a monopoly. Unless you were a guild, like I could see, maybe maybe a guild in a big city could start to, to enforce some kind of depreciation, but that would be very odd. Like you could spin a storyline out of that about depreciation being invented, um, but it's certainly not the norm. And and it, anywhere there's not a guild uh, or even a smaller city uh, or one that doesn't have tight guild enforcement, that's not going to happen. 
so that was a whole other tangent. Sorry, but the economics uh, of RPGs. <laughs> so let me know if you've seen it done well, if you've had problems because it's done poorly, uh, if you've had great experiences when it was done well. Uh, just whatever your thoughts are about economics in RPGs. And I'm going to be signing out now, so everybody have a good day. Cheers.